Hello internet. We need to talk. I'm also very aware that my sleeves don't match my shirt. The subject matter will make it clear why I insisted on wearing this, but the weather is also making me wear this. But I wanted the stripes for effect. I'm having a little bit of better luck with the lights this week, but I am gonna have to still get some more lamps once I have a bit more time, so we're working on it. This week, I have a bit of a rant because I've noticed something over the last couple of years in TV, and this is really just TV specific. I, I don't know why, but it is. I just need to talk about it because it's such a weirdly specific trope, but it keeps coming back. I don't understand. And that is why do characters keep going to prison? No, I'm not talking about Orange is the New Black or Prison Break or Oz or shows that are set in a prison. I'm talking about like a couple of episode block in which TV characters are sent to prison. I'm not talking like the Punisher anti-heroes or like the, the Day in the Limelight episodes for the villains stuck in prison. I'm talking about our heroes are sent to prison for some sort of block of time. This has happened so much recently and I just, I don't get it. It just seems such a weirdly specific thing to happen so often, but it does. So let's talk about it. Why does this keep happening? Just to let you know, I will be spoiling some recent developments in certain TV shows, uh, namely Riverdale and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, but nothing from the current season. Anything from the previous season's finales will be up for grabs, but nothing in the current seasons that are currently airing will be referenced. There are two general types of characters going to prison, and the first type is characters insisting that they're guilty when they're not guilty, and this is an Archie thing in Riverdale, and it's a Rebecca in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Both characters attempt to use their arrests to take responsibility for actions that they perceive to be bad throughout the series. Archie's been trying to make his bones with Veronica's dad and then realizes, oh shit, this guy is a really shady character and then gets arrested as a result of him finally owning up. And Rebecca gets arrested for attempted murder even though she was just trying to save the lives of her friend. They're both super chill with it. They think that they're taking responsibility. This is usually meant to show character development or to show a character trying to atone for something that they did, usually tangentially related to a crime that was committed by someone else. In Archie's case, there been a couple of murders that he has been near to but hasn't even witnessed <laughs> and in Rebecca's case there have been like the way that she's treated all of her friends so therefore they still blame themselves for this specific crime even though they they know that they cannot possibly be guilty and all this does is ruin their lives if someone were to do this in real life it wouldn't be poetic there have been interviews with the creators of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend prior to season four which said that in Rebecca's case it was supposed to demonstrate a terrible decision Rebecca has a flair for the dramatic and anything that she does, including taking responsibility for herself, she's going to go way too far. And admitting guilt to a crime she didn't commit is a stupid way of going about that. That is true, and in a show like Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, there's room to play with those kinds of decision making. But in other shows, like Riverdale, for example, it just seems hollow. And now you're just making a really dumb decision and potentially ruining your life and the lives of people around you for dramatic effect. This is something that just, it it's happened more than a few times and I just, it just, it started to make me really, really mad. You're watching it and you don't think, yes, there's someone taking responsibility for themselves. You look at it and you go, what are you doing? It's dramatic. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's pointless. The second type of characters being thrown in jail is when they are framed and they, or usually their friends, have to race to prove their innocence. Now, there's a lot more examples that I could find of this because it's a lot more common. They did it in Brooklyn Nine-Nine with Jake and Rosa. They did it with Reed in Criminal Minds, Craig in an SVU. They, they even did it in a fucking Beetlejuice episode. Like, <laughs> this still happens. Friends trying to prove their innocence in the first case where they admit their own guilt. But in this case, they're being put in prison against their wills instead of, you know, in practice, it's just half of the, the, the friends racing against the clock and half of it just someone suffering in jail. And I gotta say, I'm sick of it. Now, this is usually a really good way to show how a character is put outside of their normal situation. It's a damsel in distress-like situation without the actual damseling in distress. This is a legal way of removing a character and putting them in imminent danger without them being captured by a bad guy who shouldn't have been capturing them in the first place. It's a good way of separating one character from the rest of the group and examining how that affects the, the group 
group without them. But at the same time, I have never found those prison scenes interesting. And again, this isn't Supernatural, this isn't SVU, this isn't Lie to Me, where they go undercover into a prison to solve a case. Whereas the wacky hijinks or intense mystery solving for the group outside of the prison can be really engaging, the prison stories themselves are almost always really boring. <laughs> At least to me. This is a, a personal preference and I understand that. I think part of the reason it's so boring to me is because it keeps happening. I mean, even Game of Thrones has done it like three or four times with the same character. Now, I have to admit, in Tyrion's case, it is a little bit different because it makes sense and the whole show is sadistic, but those are still the most boring scenes out of Tyrion's arc. He's way better when he's free to do his shit. I understand that it works for his character in this one specific work. Even when the prison scenes work, it doesn't work for me. The biggest reason being, everyone seems to be doing it. And after a while, it's losing its poignance. There is a weird third variant I want to mention where people go into usually like a mental hospital or some sort of weird happenstancing things and they're kept there for some reason. Maybe they're undercover, maybe they're being tricked into staying, maybe something's manipulating something else, I don't know. This is where they start experiencing hallucinations or things that make them seem crazy and worry that they might be actually crazy and deserve to be in this spot. Uh, they did it with Cal and Lie to Me. They did it with Sam and Dean in Supernatural a couple of times. They even did it weirdly kind of with Sherlock in uh, The Hounds of Baskerville. There are some interesting things you can do with the concept, but as a whole, I think it's just incredibly overdone. And the reason why I think it gets to me so much is because it usually only lasts a couple of episodes, so it feels boring. And this is why shows like Orange is the New Black and Oz aren't included because their entire arcs are based around being in prison. These shows, the ones I'm talking about, use prison as a backdrop for something else, and it doesn't last long enough for there to be real effects. If a character pleads guilty to a crime that they didn't commit, they've literally ruined their lives and for what? The character development almost never lasts beyond these couple of episodes. And it's usually just a reason to give a character a guilt complex and temporarily atone for other things that they may have done previously. There's real potential to explore something like this. The mental hospital one for instance usually has characters confronting their inner demons but it never lasts beyond the scope of the episode and it's very very rarely ever mentioned again. Any character development that's been set up is almost immediately forgotten which makes these prison visits or whatever essentially pointless. And since we all know it isn't gonna last, it usually only lasts to the end of a given episode, there's no real tension in them going to prison, it's just another plot device. On its own, it's usually fine, but apart from SVU, every other show I've mentioned happened within the last two or three years, with Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and Riverdale happening within mere months of each other. That's when it starts to get noticeable and that's when it starts to get annoying. So these stories, and I know that this at least is a very personal preference, but I don't think these stories are fun. There's not so much that you can do from inside of a prison. I did mention this idea of putting a damsel in distress without it really being a damsel in distress, but, and it lets the other characters really work off each other and that's the part that does work. With the obligatory scenes you get from prison, unless you're doing undercover stories, which both Brooklyn Nine-Nine and FSVU have also done in addition to their prison storylines that worked to both hilarious and traumatic effects respectively, what more can you do with that? Brooklyn Nine-Nine had a character trying to join a gang and be the warden's inside man and the show does manage to get comedy from that, but these episodes, when focused on one of my favorite characters and Tim Meadows is still able to bore me. Stuff outside of prison was way more exciting and you shouldn't be able to make Andy Samberg boring. Like, you shouldn't. Since you know they're gonna get out soon, there's really not much that we can see from prison and it makes these storylines tedious. And if they're meant to put focus on the other characters, it should put focus on the other characters. Bruno Mines did this by subverting the one episode limit. So until they could get Reed out, most of the season followed the regular monster of the week format. And the scenes we did get from prison while still tedious, were far more effective because the show managed to spend nearly an entire season watching Reed wrestle with whether or not he'd succumb to his violent environment and become like the criminals he hunts. The show used this storyline to examine a real psychological question of how one's environment can affect you. And it could only do this by stretching the storyline out. And I'm not here to sing its praises either. I wasn't happy with the storyline. It's just the most effective of the ones that I've mentioned. And I get where some of this comes from. Physically going to prison can help people suffer to a for their sins or whatnot. It's not logical and in real life you have a really hard time getting yourself out of it. It's an easy way to shove character development in with no guarantee it's gonna hang around. And while this storyline can occasionally be effective, I really hate it. Why do these storylines keep happening? Well, 
once again, to separate one character from another and for character development. When I was doing my research and exploring back in my memory of how I personally reacted to some of these storylines, I kind of just thought that these prison storylines never really contributed to character development. It's put in there to make you think it will, but a lot of the time it just doesn't work. I understand why these storylines are used, but I am here to plead with creators to come up with new ideas because I'm bored. It's a mark of something that used to be effective if other shows repeat it for their own purposes. But when too many things repeat it, it becomes a cliche and that's when we need to think about something else. So that's what I'm imploring people to think about is find different ways to put your characters in distress and find different ways to shake up your environments and find different ways to introduce character development because it can be done. There's some excellent ways it can be done. We just need to find them. So that's my discussion of characters going to prison. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you disagree with me, tell me why. I mean, why is prison awesome? Why are prison arcs awesome? If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments section. Uh, once again, I will put all of my social media in the description box below. Please check those out. And once again, as a reminder, I am posting new videos on Saturdays. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye! <music>